secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 498. This is your guide to the geek side, and I'm one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, ready to roll into the new election year. Wow, we ripped that Band-Aid off. I would have worn I Got a Harris Wall shirt last uh, week. I was going to wear it, but then I thought, you know what? Why bother? Anybody watching this, is, they've already voted. But uh, oh, I, don't, anyway. I don't care who you vote for. I just yeah. want people to stop saying, I'm undecided, because being undecided means you're a moron or you don't care. Sorry. I, I hate that. I highly doubt that there's anyone who listens to us who would support the person we're talking yeah. about. So it's no big deal. But anyway, well, uh, happy to happy Monday. We're recording a little bit later because of life, but you're getting this right on Tuesday. And we're glad to have you. We have a fun show as always. Uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be fulfilling our promise from last week, which is talking about Venom. Which Todd, uh, it's been like two weeks, man. I don't know how much of the movie I remember, but you know what? We'll, we'll approach this one with the same zeal. That Thank- we Goodness, there's a plot yeah. guide in IMDb. Yeah. We'll approach this with the same <laughs> zest that we did when we talked about Fast and Furious 9 or whatever, summer of last year. Because <laughs> there's about oh, that much I, plot. I, I've wrote a thesis about Venom the Last Dance, Charlie. I was going to say, is your thesis feces? Fe- uh, thesis? Feces, the- feces. Uh, anyway, all right. But we're going to get into that in the news and all that kind of fun stuff. But uh, first and foremost, paying homage to the wonderful folks who support us over on patreon.com slash secret friends unite the only spot in the world for great exclusive secret friends unite content early shows ad free shows and just dropped just yesterday our exclusive interview always not exclusive but it was exclusive to us interview with um uh, legendary Simpson showrunner and great overall guy, Michigan guy, Al Jean, uh, that Todd and I had just an absolutely fantastic time talking to the guy. So um, you'll get that kind of stuff first on Patreon, though we, we it's hard to sit on, sit on it uh, forever. But if you want to hear it soon, you got to tune into that Patreon, which you can do for seven days for free. And then as little as $2 a month, $2 a month, Todd, we did the math. On a Starbucks, my pumpkin spice latte, I'm going to Starbucks again tomorrow uh, to have a meeting, $6 for a pumpkin spice latte, $2 a month to listen to uh, our great content. It's just, it's a no brainer. It makes one that will make it part of the new economic plan for the United States moving forward. $2 $2 a month for SFU. Just like these fine folks right here, my buddy Derek Trevilian, the figure dude, Francie, my wife's awesome hairdresser, uh, Mr. Xbox Expansion Pass and friend of the show, Luke Lore, great contributor, and my awesome Uncle Tim. Thank you all. John Sedorf, the Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, Kelly and Crayley, Brendan Myers, Corey and HD, Matthew Keel, and the folks with whom, without, with not, That would be the awesome Nias family of the Twin Cities. Sean, Stella, and Henry, we are very grateful for all that you do for us. Again, if you're listening to this, want to find out what all the fuss is about, patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Seven days for free, $2 a month to get signed up. Why haven't you done it right now? I don't know, but look into your heart. Anyway, Todd, Journey into Mystery. This is your your boy Thor. Now, this would have been a very early issue of this because oh yes, it would. The, Journey into Mystery is, is it wasn't that one of those comics that it had numbering and it hit one hundred and then it became Thor. Like it started with Thor started with one hundred. So this would have been one of the last like well, issues of this, right? And his his first appearance was in 83. So you know, this is only. 10 issues of of Thor essentially it's uh right. you know yeah so right. it's it, it basically yeah that was you know amazing uh, you know there was an amazing fantasy with Spider-Man Just there were a lot yeah, of issues yeah, yeah. I think even Iron Man was like tales of suspense no, I feel like that one uh well this is tales of no, this is journey and mystery no um I feel like Iron Man this because that that comic started in about 1968. I think it started with the regular number one, but like Captain oh, Tales of Suspense yeah. 
was Cap- number Cap- one was a, was his first appearance. Tail suspense number oh, thirty nine for Iron Man. Number six, yeah, number thirty nine was his first appearance. So yeah, a lot yeah. of characters just showed up in existing books right. that Marvel said, okay. Well, we'll change the name because that's what people want to read. Like Captain America's title started with issue one hundred. For it's probably one of the ones I got on my wall around here somewhere because I have that poster book. Which I think is right behind me. Um, but anyway, uh, so we have Thor swinging his hammer with a, oh, it, it looks like quite a crick in his neck. Uh, think you have troubles? Question mark. Probably. Uh, wait till you see what happens to Thor when he meets the human cobra. If you're looking at it on YouTube. Um, even a thunder gob cannot match my great power as you are about to learn. Uh, also, Tales of Asgard, Odin battles the ice giants. Well, that that's obviously that's burying the lead right there. So, question about the human cobra, because there's a there's a cobra who is a Spider Man villain. He's in that Serpent Society, which is going to be kind of the focus of the upcoming uh, Captain America: Brave New World movie in February. This is the same, first the same appearance character. of Cobra. Yeah, there you go. Gotcha. Oh, uh, first appearance, main story in flashback. Yeah, um, he's a doctor in India that decides to experiment with Cobra venom. He kills a dude, and then he basically it transfers him, gives him some abilities, and that that's where basically he decides he needs to then create more serum to create of more. Course. Of course, Cobra people. But really, this issue, the big part was Thor was upset because Jane. Oh, Jane. uh, Yes, Jane was uh, seeing another doctor behind uh, Thor's back, Dr. Bruce Andrews. And yeah, Thor was not happy about that. Yeah. So Um, I'm going to say Cobra's appearance is largely unchanged uh in later appearances except for he does not doesn't wear a fancy romper slash blouse whatever this thing is he's wearing and a belt so this is really it's kind of like this is it's kind of like a cross between a super villain and donna reed i don't know it, it, just to take a stab it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird combo yeah, yeah, it's very odd, especially when you look at the cover. I mean, he, the way he's like crawling down the building and puts his right. hands out it's like rar. <laughs> Remember, it's very not the, very menacing maybe a little off-putting more so than menacing I remember and, and, uh, speaking back to al gene uh from the simpsons the, the 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 campy version of radioactive man and fallout boy which was a lot of batman 66 where they faced the scout master yeah the scout master yeah. <laughs> get him boys it's and it's so weird because you think about like thor you know he's unstoppable and everything right. like i'm taking on cobra i mean it just became like it kind of seems like he okay. gets like whoever comes along right Excuse yeah me. what yeah, to do with thor along. and oh here's yeah. a villain we created for you and is he really a match don't I, know probably thor was just basically cocky and he, he kind of took everyone for granted and then things happened I mean, he'd bonk him with a hammer and be over. But uh, yeah, Stanley, uh, Stanley, obviously, assuming because really his style is all over it, even the cover really stretched it out to uh, make us think that it was going to be a, a, a match worthy of Thor's time. Well, regardless, what a classic from 1963. Moving right along, uh, somebody, of course, you know, I think the real writer of this book was probably our senior news correspondent. She did a lot of pickup work, a lot of punch-ups uh, of the work that you saw at Marvel back at that time. But I am, of course, talking about Madam Webb uh, at 120, almost five years. Yeah, her birthday coming up in two months. Uh, 125 years young, 124 years young. Down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine, waiting to give us the latest news with Madam Webb's rumors and news. Let's go. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Madam Webb, I believe you are running for office this year. Um, and right. apparently uh, the role of comptroller of the garbage uh, workers of uh, North Haverbrook is available. You're going to run for it. And you, look, you've, you promised only to skim 5% off the top. Oh, as opposed to the current nine, the current nine percent of the of the current. Well, ten percent you know? is the, the is the kind of if you looked at like how many people like get in trouble, it's like ten yeah. percent. So she's only do five percent. So right. she's being upfront, you know. Yeah, those aren't real Ron Blago- Ron Blagojevich numbers. That's for sure. <laughs> crooked governors, no. uh, cr- no. cr- yeah, crooked governors of Illinois for a hundred, Alex. All right. Well, first and yes. foremost, we have a uh, we have a big loss. 
uh, in the fan community uh, on the art side, but not not comic art per se. Um, but legendary Star Wars artist. Now, I don't believe it's the poster that I have, which is off screen here. Uh, Greg Hildebrandt. Uh, a lo- uh, left us this week. Now he did give us, as I said, very iconic. Uh, one of the one of the one shooters for 1977 Star Wars. But Todd, the, the the resume for this guy goes on and on and on. Yeah, and it's interesting because I never really I, I associated him somewhat with Star Wars, but not like exclusively. Because I remember as a kid growing up, my friend Wayne Wilcox, his dad had a really cool Hildebrandt print of Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, that's really cool. And I'm like, who's this artist? And then you also saw him um, do a lot of the Marvel art on cards. So he did a big run of, of Marvel cards back in the day. Um, he did the poster for Clash of the Titans. And one of my oh. favorites, though, um, he is he did a, a collection of, uh, it was uh, basically Greg Hilbert's fairy tales. They put it here, but he also did like uh Grimm's fairy tales where they did illustrations of classic fairy tales. I remember having that book. It was gifted to me by my aunt Marilyn and I loved it. The illustrations were amazing, hardbound. It was really a collector's piece lost along the way. Refound it later in life. And actually this one was signed, which is really cool. But yeah, I mean, he, wow. he was, it's kind of reminds me of uh, the, the class, other classic artist, you know, who did a lot of the other art. Um, Blinking his name does a lot of the posters for like Indiana Jones and um, no, I'm blanking on too. I was the, the the other sketcher I was thinking of would be Ralph McQuarrie, but he's more of a concept artist on the Star Wars. No, this is this is the guy that does, he's famous for primarily doing movie posters, um, and he's done Star Wars, Indiana Jones. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, know, I have the. the uh, what I think you can see uh, on the corner, I have the kind of the Gone with the Wind Empire Strikes Back that now Chewbacca's in front of since I moved some stuff around, but has always been a favorite of mine, but it's kind of in that sound. Probably the same as the Return of the Jedi poster I have right there. Who is it? Who oh, is here it? Here it is. Here it is. It's Drew, uh, Drew Struzan. You know, there you he go. has, yes. he, I right. mean, he does that Alex, Alex, well, he's even better than Alex Ross in a lot of ways where it's like, it's so photorealistic. His art is amazing where, you know, he right. captures their appearance. Like said, yeah. yeah. This, um, that one right there. That yeah. was my absolute favorite yep. of all time. That, that kind of the gone with the wind with Han and Leia. Um, but yeah, yeah, getting off, the t- getting off the topic because we're supposed to be talking about Hillbrand. I have to say this uh, Clash of the Titans poster. I, I don't know that that was the one cheater that I've ever seen before, but you know, damned if it isn't gorgeous. Uh, and it really, it, it's got kind of a star Wars vibe to it with um, uh, Medusa in the back, Pegasus in the yeah. foreground, Harry Hamlin and the, the chick who went on to not have a career at all. I can't so much so that I can't even remember her name, but she was, was it Andromeda? I love that Fair movie. Blue. I absolutely, ab- ab- absolutely love that movie. Uh, yeah, I got, I don't want to go watch that movie. It's an absolute classic, but, yeah. but yeah, you know, um, and, and, you know, as we're finding with a lot of this stuff, you know, we're, we seem to be having a bad run in the last couple of years in particular, where all of these big legends of, uh, of for us Gen Xer kids, uh, are, are, are reaching their Waterloo. It, it happens. Um, but leaving us a, a, a great body of work that is, is, is easily accessible, which is, which is a, a big yeah. plus too, but. Yeah, and he's part of a uh, brother team. Greg and Tim, they did yeah. some things together, some things they did separately. And um, some of the things he also did, worked on um, uh, Terry Brooks' the sort of Shannara books. I remember those. He also worked mm-hmm. on um, some classic comic book covers. And like I said, the cards. He did cards for the Magic the Gathering. He did cards for, um, there were some other ones. I think it was Marvel Overpower. And then uh, some, some basically those collector cards you got like in the '90s when you go to the comic book shop, which were which were pretty fantastic. Right. So um, they yeah. do. I know we, we are going to have show. more of these, Charlie. Yeah. We're going to have more of these deaths of based on Charlie, yeah, because we're old now. I know. And uh, I know. they were older, and, and when we were, and they're uh, mu- and, and they're much older. They're all in their '70s and '80s, mm-hmm. so it's just what's going to yeah. happen. But, but uh, yeah, R- R.I.P. Yeah. to Hildebrand. Now, is the, the uh, Tim the brother? Is he also st- is he still? Alive? He was he he passed away first. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, that is a shame. Well, our hearts go out uh, definitely to the families of those uh, two gentlemen and uh, their work will, uh, will, will be there to enjoy uh, for the eternity. So, all right, turning the lens to the future, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you've heard of it. You like it. You hate it. We watched, because uh, we're, we're getting closer to the end of our 
our voyage uh, getting ready for 2025, which will be, you know, more MCU films. Uh, and we watched uh, Wakanda Forever last night, almost three hours. I, I did not remember that it was that long. And I, much like the other um, post Endgame films, I'm finding I'm enjoying it more Except Quantum Quantum Mania, I, I still hated. Uh, but I thought this I thought this was a little bit more interesting in a rewatch. To be honest with you, like I mean, I even found Eternals more interesting than this. But anyway, we've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we got a, yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, we did get a uh, a kind of a sizzle reel uh, for a lot of the 2025 product uh, projects, including Ironheart, Rory Williams, who was a character in the movie that I was just talking about, a new animated property for Spider Man. Very exciting for me. Uh, the much anticipated return of Daredevil, and I should say, the bringing of the characters from those Netflix shows into the MCU. Though Charlie Cox says Daredevil has already had a, you know, uh, several appearances in the MCU. Um, the return of What If, which I'm a huge fan of the animated What If. Uh, they keep throwing Deadpool and Wolverine in there as if it hasn't already come out, but it's it's featured very prominently because it is finally dropping on Disney+. Plus. Um, which I know my friend Derek, who has small it's, kids, is It's like, called, well, yeah. uh, please subscribe now, don't wait yeah. till the new stuff comes out. Exactly. You know, my friend Derek, uh, who has small kids, is like, yeah, I never got around to seeing it, but I'm dying to see it. And I'm like, when's it coming to Disney Plus? And I'm like, oh, so sad. Go to the theater. And then uh, an animated project uh, uh, about Wakanda, about the Black Panther world. And then not super sure how I'm feeling about one of my favorite characters, uh, Simon Williams is Wonder Man uh, coming, which will be this time next year. Uh, it looks kind of weird. I was excited to see in the sizzle reel that Trevor Slattery, uh, the character played by the great Ben Kingsley, will be the sidekick to Wonder Man and, and that and the actors in Hollywood. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird take, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, so anyway, let's I don't talk know how else you do that yeah. character, Charlie, because the character in the comic is going to be doesn't fit in the MCU because quite honestly, he has no connection to reality in the MCU. Well, I, the character, you know, him what is going to absorb Venom's identity or uh, Vision's going to take his personality, which we've never been introduced this character for. I mean, that's right? that's, a, that's a part of the character, but the whole him being an actor and all this, that was the latter half of. of well, that's what that's what we here. have here. We have a character being an actor. Quite honestly, right. it seems so like the, it fits, yeah. right? Well, they're glomming onto that part of it. It's not. It's not really how the yeah. character started out. But regardless, we, we shall see. But anyway, let's the, walk. Because yeah. MCU is really good about doing that, right? <laughs> right, and bring and bringing in the villain and killing him off. Um, exactly. But yeah. It looks like this. Now we're following a link from Den of Geek. Uh, they're starting out uh, by talking about the next Marvel film, which we're getting in about a month from now. Uh, the latest rattle of the Spumco. Uh, in a recent episode of the Bad Trip to the Movies Patreon that April and I do, we we talked about Morbius again. Uh, still not as bad as Madam Web. Um, but Todd, what are your thoughts on Craven? It well, just looks- this this article from Den of the Geek, we do get, Den of Geek, uh, we do get a close up of the snapshot of the Rhino for the right. first time. I'm like, that oh. looks that's an interesting take so are we getting like mutant men he i don't kinda, know i mean he kind of looks like the scarecrow to be honest it looks like a character from wizard of oz i it, it does kind of give me a scarecrow oh, really vibe. i, I, I don't uh, he's know. Giving, if anything he's giving me a lot cowardly lion vibe oh I don't okay the scarecrow. Uh, yeah yeah maybe, maybe you, squ- <laughs> okay. you, squ- you squish the two of them together in like play-doh it's gray um, yeah i don't know who's playing him but i mean this movie is r-rated which is odd very violent so once yeah. again i don't know how this one fits in i mean this movie will probably be kind of status quo with the rest of the sony live action films which are gonna be dumb action films yeah big time i mean i i don't know that uh i do like the main character i mean i do like the the fact of craven being a hunter he's yeah. russian it's kind of goofy it kind of fits right. this anyways um yeah. and spider-man yeah. not being this i don't know if i mean the i mean the last spider-man game that came out craven was a part of it okay. and he was hunting heroes essentially yeah. people in the spider universe so sure uh not having spider-man kind of sucks but I, I i at this point i'm like 
it's kind of too late, isn't it? They couldn't really put him in. It would be weird. How do you how do you plug yeah, how do you plug Spider Man into yeah. this type of universe? It doesn't work. I'm yeah. glad he's not involved with this stuff, Charlie. No, let's be because, honest. Because the films are terrible and you wouldn't want to stick exactly. Tom, want to stick Tom Holland in there and get that stink on him? I don't think so. Obviously, you know, you and I will probably see this. I mean, the only genre film I've avoided in recent years was Joker two. Um, we, we mostly see everything else you and I, and we end up talking about it. You know what I mean? Or was there something else we skipped in this last year that we were like, no, we just, we just can't even, I can't remember. I don't know. I mean, I probably would have seen Joker. It just wasn't it just so much of the stuff was happening. I didn't see it, but yeah. I mean, it's coming to max. I'll see it then. I suppose. So um, yeah, I mean, we saw Madam Webb and we had a lot of fun talking about that, but anyway, that is out yeah. on December yeah. 13th, but just in time for Christmas will be the third season of what if uh, over on Disney plus this was actually teased almost immediately as season two ended 12 months prior. So that, that they did the 12 days of Christmas with that one, which I saw people bitching about it after that, like, Oh, that was a terrible way to release it. Cause people just didn't know it's streaming. It doesn't matter if somebody watches episode one, they're going to watch the whole thing if they like it. Because it just if plays. you think it's weekly, guess what? When you show up, it'll be the rest will be out. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> However many weeks it takes you what? to watch it. How does this happen? I'm so upset that yeah. they're all there now. <laughs> I know it's terrible. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But we, um, yeah, we, we got, is this? Yeah, I don't know how they're releasing it this time. Yeah, Shang Chi is going to be involved, yeah. and then we're also going to get. Uh, Oscar Isaac is the Moon Knight, which is cool. For Moon Knight, yeah. yeah. So we'll see. And Maury, Matthew Chauncey replaces AC Bradley as head writer with Brian Andrews directing. I mean, I don't know if this is supposed to all come together. I guess it will, but will it just be I mean, a fun could. take? Yeah. I mean, it's it's what if, so nothing yeah. sticks. And if they yeah. find something they like, they can pull it in if they want. And don't be surprised if it happens. Exactly correct. Um, so anyway, then we get into 2025, and I had mentioned a, a new animated program uh, around Spider-Man, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man at the end of January, originally titled Spider-Man Freshman Year, so you've heard us talk about it in the past. Spidey is being voiced by Hudson Thames, or Thames if you prefer, uh, who is not someone that I am familiar with. But uh, Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio will join as Daredevil and the Kingpin, respectively, alongside with Coleman Domingo as Norman Osborn. Awesome. I love Coleman Domingo. He's from Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, and Hugh Dancy, which sounds very familiar to me, as Otto Octavius. Uh, produced and written by Jeff Trammell, the series will use the flashy animation styles similar to the Spider-Verse films, which is a good take because people clearly like that. It really resonated with See, it. See, I didn't get that vibe. I got a very flat, not yeah. like the alter weird styles. I got a very flat style, which is well, which is fine. It, it's, well, yeah. it's iconic. It looks different. It stands something, out. Something to be surprised about. So, so yeah, so I'm excited. Um, I've wanted, you know, something weekly about Spider-Man to kind of dig my teeth into for a very long time. Obviously, we have Spider-Noir coming up with Nick Cage on uh, Amazon Prime, which if it's out a year from now, I would be surprised. Um, so now we have this, and we've known about the. It takes yeah, about it, it takes about two years for really anything to be produced, and that's okay. Based on based on uh, X Men ninety seven, if it hits that level of quality mm -hmm. and good writing, I'm yeah. in. Um, although that had a lot of nostalgia with it, this one will be interesting. But I've liked a lot of the Spider Man cartoons. Yeah. I agree. All right, moving uh, forward into February. Now, I'm hearing some not great things about feedback about this film, so I definitely kind of have my sphincter clenched. Is there on early this screenings one. or something? There was a screening about a month ago, and maybe, you know what? Really? Maybe it was fake, it, maybe mm. it was fake news. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it was just basically a focus group screening that people were kind of trashing it. But the new Captain America film, uh, starring, uh, continuing the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series, which I loved, but Todd was kind of lukewarm on. And I don't hear anybody else talking about about how much they loved it, so I guess I'm in the minority, which is okay. Um, our new vi uh, new villain is played by the indomitable Giancarlo Esposito as Sidewinder, who led, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the uh, Serpent Society, which was a classic uh, supervillain band in the 1980s on, in the cap title under Mark Grunewald, the late Mark Grunewald, who's one of my favorite. Was Cobra uh, part of that team? Uh, yes, he was, as I mentioned. Uh, oh, my goodness. Earlier. Yes, there we absolutely. go. It all there comes together. There is the connection. So, um, yeah, Tim Blake Nelson uh, reprising his role as the leader all the way back to 2008's Ed Norton Hulk, which is so weird. Uh, and uh, Shuri Haas as the Israeli superhero and mutant 
Sabra, which I know there's been some controversy around that as well, but um, she's Jewish. She's Jewish. <laughs> my goodness. Um, so anyway, I, and of course, Harrison Ford as the Red Hulk. Come on. How bad could it possibly be? Uh, it probably should have been a question. Uh, th- the movie originally wrapped in June 2023. Oh, my That's God. That's interesting. Right. Yeah, and was supposed to be come out in July 2024. That's a that's a long time to stri- have been wrapped. Well, I mean, it's the the strike, and who knows what how they had to go and. I, I, well, the strike was. It was, I mean, so, so, it, was it wrapped it, before May. the strike. Oh, I don't know. They could, but yeah, they, that's they, a, yeah. I, they're, they, you know, post credits. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's there must be a reason. All right, I've been doing all the talking. Take it away. Talk okay. to me about Daredevil. Okay, Daredevil: Born Again. Uh, we've seen. Uh, I'm glad we are finally getting a, a, a showing of this because they showed scenes of this at Comic Con, I believe, and uh, yeah. people were talking about how much they loved us. Essentially, the team's back together, and we are getting a new villain called what is his name? Uh, I didn't look. It's ahead. not in here. Um, Whoops. But yeah. Um, but apparently this is the interesting part. Um, we are also getting Mohan Kapoor will appear as Kamal Khan's father as Ooh. one of Matt's clients. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. Wilson Bethel returns as Dex Point, Dexter Point, Dexter, Dex Point, Dexter, uh, now in full bullseye garb. And Nikki M. Janes as fellow lawyer Chris McDuffie and Kamar De Los Reyes as vigilante white tiger that's all yes. kind of new stuff i didn't know about but yeah there was going to be a new villain that is a fairly new addition to daredevil's entourage okay. he's a serial killer oh. um so kingpin will not be the main thrust uh, as a villain which is that's good right. because good. we've already had two seasons where kingpin was the main right. thrust as the bad guy well, and they, um, they kind of teed it up at the the uh, uh, uh after credits of something uh, that the kingpin uh, is moving into following a comic arc where Wilson Fisk is the mayor of New York City. So well, that I was uh, that was the end of Echo. Uh, ah, there you go. There they you talked go. about it. Yeah, right. Because last time we saw him was Echo, which was there a series go. I really loved. And uh, yeah, I, I I think this is a good way to do it where they should be a balance it shouldn't yeah. be like he's gone forever the kingpin should be that guy that always looks like, like luther you know not, not gone forever comes back and he's always um going from there um but the name of the villain charlie is called muse so there you go that that uh that alt rock band that you like muse yeah, yeah uh thunderbolts with an asterisk is next in may 2025 um, at this summer. point we haven't seen anything new about this. So right. based on the trailer, it seems like people are more excited about it because they know what to expect. Right. And then we have obviously Bob as Sentry is going right. to be uh, essentially what they were looking for. And I will be curious how Sentry will be used mm-hmm. if he is going to be an ongoing part of of the MCU or he'll be a one off no, and fly shame. away at yeah. the end, like white vision. Right. You're right. Which, which, you know, that's a project that's coming back white vision, but we yeah. won't, we won't quite yeah. get into that. So yeah. um, I already just keep forgetting that this is actually coming out, but this is um, st- talking about another sphincter clinching moment. The fantastic four first steps uh, on July of 2025. So that's the Marvel's late summer film, um, you know, with a, a cast, that's pretty stellar with, you know, you feel like you can't miss when you put Pedro Pascal in front of something. Um, uh, you know, Marvel's first family uh, set actually at the time that the comic launched in the early 1960s uh, and uh, and directed by, speaking again, WandaVision's Matt Shackman. Um, and uh, obviously leading into them joining the MCU in, in present time. So it's the journey of that with Galactus. Actual Galactus, because there have been some storyboarded art of a physical corporeal individual who looks like Galactus, not a goddamn cloud, <laughs> which is what we got in the, yeah. the 2007 Fantastic Four 2. Oh. But there yeah. was a sizzle reel, apparently, at SDCC, which gave viewers a taste of the movie Zippy Aesthetic, complete with Pascal's adopting a mid-Atlantic accent for Reed and snippets of a stirring score from Michael Giacchino, cementing the Kerbal's feel like better... But even better, fans got a quick look at the movie's primary antagonist, Galactus, played by Ralph Anderson, complete with the purple 
helmet. Right now, nice. we have not seen Julia Garner as a Silver Surfer, not really the Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer's uh, significant other, as good, well good. as John Malkovich and Paul Walter Hauser. I'm hoping Paul Walter Hauser is the molecule, uh, is the, uh, is the uh, mole, man. mole man, and I think John Milkovich should be the molecule man. There I don't you know. Go. Or the puppet. Right, man. wrong, indifferent. Pup- hey, or puppet. the puppet master. Well, puppet master works. He was the stepfather of uh, Alicia Masters, who is the things. Those girlfriend. weird lips and big eyes. Yes, and very, yeah, very, very, very Kirby. I will make a prediction, and this is not a particularly bold one. We will get a tra- uh, trailer for this. Super Bowl at the Super Bowl. That's, yep, that's what makes I'm sense. Yeah. Uh, Eyes of Wakanda is another animated uh, piece, and this is essentially telling tales of the home country of Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Ryan Coogler is behind this, and um, we'll find out essentially if this is going to be like six episodes, weekly release. I'm curious, you know, because this will be something that um, I, I think it will be if you're big into the Wakanda mythos. Um, it's for that audience, but is it going to get people that not necessarily going to be interested to tune into that world? Which quite honestly, if black Panther himself is not involved in, are you really that interesting? It'd be like, it's like Parker before Peter Parker. It's like, it's like this Pumco. Is it interesting without the main character? Uh, they managed to not make that interesting, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be going to be the case here. But speaking Mm of, uh, obviously, uh, the black Panther, section of the MCU. I already talked about the fact that I just watched Wakanda Forever recently. Uh, but Rory Williams, as a, a teenager at MIT, who's a wonder keen, builds her own suit, which the Wakandans help her uh, refine down, is Ironheart. And she's going to be coming uh, almost this time next year. So it'll be a fall series um, where she uh, will be doing her thing. Uh, also cast Anthony uh, Ramos from In the Heights will play Parker Robbins, a.k.a. The Hood. Now, was it was I'm thinking that Anthony Ramos, was he also in Transformers, the guy who got the G.I. Yes, Joe he was. The end? Yeah, there yep. you go. That's him. Um, and yeah, The Hood, yeah, The Hood was a primary villain who got a very lame action figure about a year ago that's just a dude uh, with scre- hood. screaming with a removable hood, but he's like wearing like jeans and a, and a member's That's kind of how he rolls, though. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. He's yeah. never had a great like look right the hood the the hood uh i i didn't know about this marvel zombies making a comeback uh basically this time next year uh marvel zombies obviously a very big part i think of both seasons of what if um but marvel zombies has been huge ever since robert kirkman who gave us the walking dead uh in the late aughts gave us the series um and animated probably six to eight episodes and is it gonna be i mean could this just be uh like a 90 minute thing mm. could it be like werewolf by night because it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be a full-on series. oh there you go halloween treat okay okay yeah my i was you're Which right i probably was, makes I, sense i was just yeah because we we haven't had yeah the werewolf by night that was that was actually two years ago I, we did rewatch that during the seasons um but yeah looking forward to that so and then yes wonder man christmas of next year I don't know, man. I just, I, you're right. It's a weird character to do, but you know, he was there at the beginning. The character was a villainous character in, in the very early days of, uh, of the Avengers. I think it was issue nine, uh, where he was, he was a, a, a failed industrialist, a competitor of Tony Stark who couldn't make it. So broken penniless, he sold his soul to Baron Zemo who gave him he zapped him with a ray and gave him powers and said, go kill the Avengers for me. And then Simon ultimately couldn't do it. And he falls into a sleeping coma where they think he's dead. And then he comes back in the seventies and he's revived and he becomes a member of the team, blah, blah, blah. And the actor thing well, didn't, wasn't a factor until the eighties. So I don't I know. I think they're trying to just find something a little less like goofy and maybe make it a little bit more like, Hey, he was an actor. Let's go with that part. And right. uh, right. veer away from some of the goofy, hey, it's the villain of the week like the Cobra. Right. Um, and this is interesting because this is about a guy uh, who is looking to be cast as super as this character, Wonder Man, who's basically a superhero. So at this point in the MCU, I'm not sure if they're making – I know they made a musical – of the, the, the Avengers. I don't oh, know if they're Rogers doing musical? like right. MCU – inside movies or they're basically saying superheroes exist, but they don't give us our rights to make movies about them. So we're going to make superhero movies oh, okay. at 
and basically this becomes a thing. But we also find out, um, and his the name of the actor is Simon Williams. Yeah. And um, we do find out that there this will include Eric Williams, aka the Grim Reaper, played right. by Demetrius Gross. And then Trevor Slattery will be in here as well. Right, who, right, quite right. honestly, we still don't know if he's just a a goof. Is truly the man, the the the, the Mandarin. We don't really know overall. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I'm yeah. I'm curious. This could be a one off, yeah. like like She Hulk or something like that, where it just feels a little different. It's and that's not up. a yeah. bad thing. Yeah. I suppose not. All right. Well, by this point, we are in uh, 2026. Uh, and beginning the next Avengers Mega Dynasty, which would be Avengers Doomsday, where we know that we are getting the return of Robert Downey Jr., who is uh, uh, stepping over Jonathan Major's, uh, uh, the corpse of his career, <laughs> to take the lead again. So, man, how does that really got to feel? They set this guy up so that he effed up so bad that they got they got That's a Terrence back Howard. In yeah. Oh. <laughs> There you go. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, with Terrence Howard, he just, he mixed it up with Robert Downey Jr., but he didn't do anything. Well, he wanted money, and Marvel's like, no. And he says, okay, you are replaceable, because Marvel at that point was was very, very cheap and didn't pay anybody anything. Right, well, they didn't um, have it. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't even even Disney. It was still Paramount that was making them. Yeah, so So um, that is it for 2025. I would say anything in 2026 is... Highly likely to change. Yes, it's the waves of the wind that goes, but that's right. more Marvel than I really expected. Because I know Bob Iger had said essentially, uh, we're going to trim things down. So maybe this is just like let's get rid of some of these things that, quite honestly, have been made for about three years, and right. let's move on. Uh, I was going to say, are we going to cut it off there? Because we can probably talk about this for another. Yes, time. absolutely. Very good. Yeah, like twenty twenty six is so unknown. Yeah, because as I said, it continues to trickle down, and they actually have an entry on Blade, which is hilarious because we know that that's not going to exactly. happen. Oh, yep. my goodness. All right. Well, let's move on. Ah, uh, Legos. Oh, my goodness. I, I didn't even... I, I didn't even know this was happening. The Lego yes. Dynasty returns. Talk to me about it. Yeah. So, the interesting thing about Lego is the license gets moved around. Um, previously, Warner Brothers owned it, made all the games and everything like that. Now... Lego is going fast and loose. They've got Lego Fortnite. Uh, we do have the Lego uh, Sony game coming out, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. There's been Lego racing games. And now uh, I believe the Warner Brothers license has now been uh, absorbed by Universal. So now Lego films are going to be made at Universal. They actually, and basically that they're, deal. They're, they're going to have the stop motion where they have the little guy filming the, okay, move him, move his leg, move his leg. Yes, do that's exactly how it's going to go. Yeah. In, yeah. In, the, in yep. the water tower with uh, with the yep. Animaniacs. Yeah, I like it. Yes. I'm yes. It. So that deal ended in 2020 with Warner Brothers. So this new deal is interesting. So we're, apparently we're getting three creators who are very good. Joe Cornish, who did Attack the Block. Jake Kazan, who did Jumanji, Welcome the Jungle, and The Next Level, which those movies are fun. They're not exactly like, you know, blockbusters. And then Patty Jenkins, right. uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Basically, Woman, they're Wonder all going to be involved. Um, and Jake Kazan's actually doing that Red One movie, which is the uh, the, the Santa oh, Claus right. with Rock, which it's looks entertaining. A, it's such yeah. a weird movie that just feels like it should be on Netflix. You know what I mean? It just it does feel like a Netflix it film. Does it feels like feel like it, yeah. it would be on the big screen. I just I wonder how it's going to do. But but anyway, I'll see it. I'll see I'm it. guessing well because holiday movies like that, I feel like will attract audience. I'll see it yeah. too. It looks yeah. dumb fun. Yeah. So at this point, uh, we also getting so the way this is going to work out that. Um, we're going to get a script by Andrew Mogul and Jared Paul. That's based on an original idea. Good idea. Jenkins film will be really based on a script. She current with, with Jeff Johns and okay. Cornish will be writing a script by Heather Ann Campbell from a treatment by Sam, Simon rich, lots of bricks in motion, of course. And at this point we do have uh, Lego Jurassic park, uh, themed video games. Obviously have happened before universal. There's uh, wicked, uh, maybe we get a version of Wicked uh, coming from Lego. Who knows? Uh, but other than that, I, I don't know what this could be. I mean, Universal Properties are, uh, you know, what? The Fast and the Furious is one of those. Um, Pretty much. What, what else are they making these days? I don't know. That's a good question because let's see. What do they have? Jurassic Park. Yeah. Uh, they we're getting, don't we're have the Harry Potter because that's Warner Brothers. Right. We're getting um, another one of those. Where... Um, where is uh, 
I'm drawing a blank. I don't even know what I was thinking of. Um, they don't have a mission possible is paramount. So that's, yeah, that's not that. Uh, they have, I'm just looking through their list of movies. So they have, Oh God, some of these are just bad. Uh, trolls. They have the trolls property. Um, they have, um, looking through fast and furious. Yes, of course Mm -hmm. they have candy man, which I don't think they're gonna make that the Adams family animated, uh, films, um, house of Gucci. I don't think they're going to do that. The sing films, uh, uh, the bad guys, which was that animated film about the bad guys, which was cute. Um, Black phone. Don't think they're doing that. The minions. No, the, oh, oh, that's the, right. Minions. Well, hold on. Black uh, phone yep. just started a production of its sequel. Like today, it was in the headlines. So I don't think they're doing that. a Lego movie on that. Oh, you're talking. Okay, the adaptability. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, the, 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 the um, black Lego. Oh, phone. Shrek. Is that DreamWorks? That's like Shrek films. Um, the is minions. That, is that Universal now? Is that where? Uh, yeah, DreamWorks ended yeah. Up? I mean, DreamWorks is Universal. Yeah, at their okay. parks. I'm looking. I'm keeping looking here. Um. Puss in Boots, yeah, that's one. Um, Megan, not going to happen. Oh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, I mean, oh. that could happen. Um, keep going here, Charlie. Uh, I, Oppenheimer I, not doing that. Oh, uh, man, Le- Lego, Lego, <laughs> Lego Nuclear Bomb. Five Charlie Nights at Freddy? I mean, oh. sure, why not? Now we're talking. Uh, I just panda. I would just I love mean, to, maybe. I would just love to know if we're ever going to get another game by Traveler's Tales that's Lego because you know it's the only games that I enjoy. But oh well. Uh, I not. mean, they do have the they do have the um, Horizon Zero Dawn game coming out. Uh, that's Lego. Oh, okay. which is um, it's. But I don't know if you're going to see any more DC Lego games just because what's oh, once again uh, they're kind of not associated with Warner Brothers anymore. But yeah. we don't know. No more association. Well, very interesting. We will uh, we will see the Lego Dynasty as it evolves. All right. So, Todd, scary movie came out in two thousand and two thousand two, two thousand four. Like it's it's a project, a product of the the early aughts. I think tw- I th- I saw it with my dad. It was one of the last movies I saw with my dad. So, if yeah. I saw it with my dad, it would have been probably before I went into the Air Force active oh, duty so in the, so ni- like in the 98 gotcha yeah okay. um yeah. i don't know when the first one was launched um that one was a surprise hit i mean the wayne brothers uh, you know, it, you know, it says right here that the original did come out in the year 2000 2000 so, okay so right. i must have been and then there from, was a, a, from, a second from, and then a, a third uh in 01 and then i assume the third would have been a couple of years after that so okay. always come, coming coming yeah. out at the same time of yeah. year um yeah. so but it's been over 20 years and it was just a, a straight send up in particular of slasher the the rebirth of the slasher films from the late 90s because your main character ish was the ghost face guy from scream um lampooned with an affairs first debut unknown yep. cast in that movie it was great I- I think, uh, and what was that by the Zucker brothers? Like the, the guys who did airplane and stuff. Was that them? the first two I, films were by the Wayans? Oh, right. Okay. So I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. Yeah. The, and then the it got Wayans. moved along. It was from, yeah. uh, and who was actually, it was behind the films. Would it have been, oh, it was Miramax. Oh, right. boy. The never, Harvey, never. our boy Harvey. Yeah. Right. Um, it's perfect timing for them to come back because obviously the screen movies have never died. We've been right. had so many new horror films since, you know, right. those have come back and we had a lot of those horrible parody films, like in the, the mid nineties to oh. the mid two thousands. There was bad Ro- the like romantic, superhero like, movie, disaster movie. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, I was going to say it, you know, there's always a market for that comedy horror, that very lampooning, uh, comedy horror as well. You know, there's unintentionally horrible movies like, oh, they go into mention talking about like, you know, m- movies by M night Shyamalan and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is something that's starting to roll is that we're seeing like some movement on this. Uh, yeah. And the, and the Wayne brothers are back. And which is, you know, hopefully they've got some good ideas. I mean, the Wayans brothers have a after in living color, their <laughs> their track record has always been a little spotty. That, that, um, that, that, yeah, that that really was their, you know, peaked in high school kind of moment for the Wayans brothers. I hate to say it. But yeah, no, there have been five, five or six of these movies. Five. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Parts three through five. The Wayans were not part. So they were, they were around for the first yeah, two. Regina yeah. Hall and Anna Ferris were right. the, the stars of the first one. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, right. who could forget Ghostface uh, smoking a bong? I mean, oh my god, yeah, with uh, Smokey, who was the dad, uh, who was Marlon Wayne's character. Mar- was it Marlon Wayne's character? Yeah, I think it was Marlon oh Wayne's. God. Sean Marlon. Uh, yeah. You yeah, know what? Know. They didn't get. Um, they didn't get. Um, who who's the other brother? I think is the most talented of, Kenan, the, of them Ke- all. Well, Keenan was no, the no, no, no. The the other one who was in the last Boy Scout. Um, oh, Damon. Uh, Damon. I there think, you go. I think Damon's the most talented of them all, oh, I and they agree. didn't get him to be in it. <laughs> yeah, and well, and then his son, uh, Damon Wayne's Jr., was in. Was it uh, New Girl? Wasn't that his? Yeah, son? he's been a lot of stuff. He's very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's he got the talented gene. So this would be fun. I mean, yeah, if the Waynes are involved, it, it has a chance. Uh, of winning it back. So, so we, we will find out. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. Uh, you know, everybody knows that if you have a good thing, what do you do when you have a good thing in entertainment, Todd? You keep pushing it until it's not good anymore. You leave it alone <laughs> and let it become a classic. Right, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, is not what they're, alone. that is not what they're doing with the stellar uh, two-part huge cinematic version of it that we got in the last couple of years because they are doing a new series called uh, it welcome to dairy or dury if you prefer d-e-r-r-y uh which is the 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 setting uh of the um of the whole shebang a bang uh so what's go- what's going on this? this is an hbo max series not a movie which is good mm-hmm. I-, I can sit and watch something on max and uh not feeling like that so uh this is going to be todd what's your favorite type of storytelling conveyance starts with a p Wait, whoa yes so i love it yes this is going to be well, I mean, di- the, whole, the whole premise of it is a history of right it occurrences right, right? So, yeah so that actually makes sense because yeah the, and you know the big exposition dump that happened in uh the first film with the kids in the past in the 1980s was oh we're you know go to library and go through the stacks and all these convenient newspaper clippings and you see you know eight kids killed in a uh, lumber collapse and then in the background you see scars guards face you know what i mean so it's like he was he always comes back every 27 years he survives on fear he's got this weird little underground spiral of dead bodies floating around and that's what gives him his power so this will be laying the groundwork uh, and one of the more memorable stories uh, told by uh, character Mike Hanlon's father, Will Hanlon, uh, telling the story of his last days. I think Hanlon was he was a black character, wasn't he? Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yes. There you go. Yes. Um, so yes. So I am. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, April is a huge Stephen King fan, as I've said many, many times. So this will definitely be on our radar. Uh, radar nine episode series that I would have to believe is going to be out this time next year. Yeah, and speaking to that part you talked about, he talks about his telling his truth, and and this is the interesting part when I was looking at what is that, Tori? He says, Will Handel and his fellow Air Force servicemen had created a nightclub called the Black Spot, a haven for black patrons in the time of segregation and deep-seated racism. Mm -hmm. One night, the main Legion of White Decency, a violent white supremacist group, burned the club to the ground, killing many innocent people. While the Legion set set the blaze, something far more sinister was lurking the flames, it itself. So that's it's, kind of a cool it, idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and, and fits in uh, what with which makes it good. So do we get a day? And I keep scrolling. Boy, this is a long article. Um, yeah, to me. Oh, and oh, this was and this was a whole article. This was a and Todd Entertainment Weekly is still around. There's photographs here um, with oh a lot of vintage Air Force too. That's right up your alley. Twenty twenty five nine episodes and yep. the Muscettis who are behind. It one and it two are behind this as well. Uh, they won't be directing it, but they are uh, basically executive producers who developed the idea. Very nice. Well, I'm fired up for Muschietti. this. Uh, this will be good. Muschietti. This will be a good stuff. Yeah. I am assuming uh, Halloween of next year. All right. Well, that takes us out of the news, Todd. I've got my phone out, my Fuber app, my feeble Uber app. It's time to get that funky, stinky cab to take us uptown to Skugtown, Nastyville. Cab pulls up, smoke pouring out, disgusting stench as we get in. But the AM radio is on and it's playing this very familiar advertisement. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. 
being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So, um, quite honestly, with Halloween, a lot of the stuff I was catching up on was I was watching, I'm, I think I'm on episode five of, of um, Hysteria, which I'm enjoying oh, quite a bit. Yes. Uh, like yeah. Too. Yep. I'm not finished. Obviously, I'm like, how long is this? It's like an episode. So, I've got five more to, or three more to do. Yep. So, I'll be working on that. I, I was also um, watching some more of the penguin, which is really, really good. Gotta get around um, to that. I think we're only on the second yep. one. So, I think we're waiting. At this so, so, it was the wife's choice of what to watch on Halloween. So, we were watching some other things and we we finished up WandaVision, of course, but we're going to talk about that next week. You mean so, Ag- Ag- this is Agatha? This is the second time you called it WandaVision. It's called WandaVision Agatha Part Two. WandaVision yeah. Part Two. Well, two. I kind of feel like it's the one one universe at this point. It's a, um, a, a, yeah. a little a little pocket. It's a pocket. Exactly. Exactly. Um, they said Wanda's name quite a few times. Um, but that brings me to the wife got the choice of what to watch. She likes a little bit more. Uh, Whim, whimsy in the fair of uh, certain things. So we watched Descendants: Rise of Red. Charlie, are you aware of the Descendants franchise on Disney? I think maybe not. I think perhaps in name only. So Reader's, okay. Reader's Digest version. What is it? So um, Descendants is essentially taking fairy tales and saying. These are the descendants of Snow White, uh, Sleeping Beauty, and it's about fairy tale kingdoms. And there's villains, and they're kind of uh, uh, segregated from the good people. And you've got Cinderella played by Brandy. You've got the Queen of Hearts Wait, played by Rita Ora, and which is kind of crazy. I'm like, oh, Rita Ora's in this, and wow. So Brandy was in it too. So because Brandy actually did play Cinderella in a Disney movie back in the day, so she came back to be a part of this. So it's okay. a, it's also become so it's become like a big phenomenon. There's three movies. This is actually the fourth movie. There's an animated series. So basically, it's big with the tweens. Uh, it's also musical so think of like high school musical with like fantasy settings things like this they've also done the zombies series where you've got like zombies living in a world with humans but they do musical numbers and dance and i don't think the, the zombies actually eat anybody it, it, so, it, it sounds riveting <laughs> yes yes so so this movie is essentially a spin-off where you've got the queen of hearts daughter red who they live in wonderland of course and they're have not they've chose not to come in part of the fold and join the rest of the the magic kingdoms and um but they decide to uh well how's this work so the one girl who has the one woman who has now been in charge of everything went on a sabbatical so they brought in ursula's granddaughter to run who was a former villain to run the high school. Here we go. We're getting there. She then decides, well, I'm a, 
I'm a rebel. I'm going to invite Wonderland and, and have them allow them to join. So they send an invitation and um, Red is kind of a rebel, Charlie, and she uh, is not happy that her mother's kind of a tyrant. And um, there's a lot of foreboding. So uh, we do find out, though, that Red is is uh Trying to rebel against her mother is not working very well. Well, the invitation comes to the Queen of Hearts. It's Red doesn't think she's going to allow her to go. And all of a sudden, the Queen of Hearts allows her to go. Hmm. What could it be? Well, I don't want to give it all away, but essentially you do find out it was all a ploy of the Queen of Hearts because what? essentially they've been, they've been, uh, there's the entryway into the kingdoms has been, held but because the int- the offering is there they can go into the other kingdom and hijinks ensue we go back in time charlie um and there's musical numbers and yeah um i mean we yeah. got like we got a we got like teen versions of like hades we got a teen version of of captain hook uh another spin off of or like ursula uh, daughter or sister, I don't know. We've got um, different versions of different characters. Jasmine and Aladdin, who are Indian now rather than, <laughs> than Arabic. Oh. It, yeah, it was fun. It's goofy. The musical numbers weren't too bad. And I was kind of like, okay, it's got a little beat, but it's it's fun. So that if you're looking for something with your kids to watch, it's not horrible. It's, oh, it's fun. Kind of kid appropriate with Brandy, who's like our age. She's <laughs> yeah. Brandy is a yeah. is Cinderella and her Prince Charming guy, and yeah, oh yeah, gosh. um, yeah. So I will say, not bad if you're looking for something for the whole family around the holiday season. That's fair. that's it. You can tell I was like digging the dirt. I'm like, did I watch anything else? I don't know. I, I watched I, a YouTube you, video. You know what I'm talking about? That you know what I've started having to do midweek is send myself an email when I watch something. Talk about on show this week. I watched this because I forget. I mean, especially with traveling and everything, you know, and all the different shit we do, uh, it's tough. But I, I and I sent myself an email with these three things. But I was uh, uh, the victim of uh, I was the victim of letting April choose movies twice, and we have this ongoing uh, gag when we fly. I always watch Infinity War and Endgame. That's my flying thing. Like annually, that's when I watch it because I don't fly but more than two, three times a year. Uh, And April will download and watch terrible movies from Netflix. And I will often look over her shoulder. In the past, when she had wired headphones, I would listen on the other half and we would just riff on it because they're so bad. Uh, But we ended up watching a couple. But first... I watched a movie that was the the third in a, a trilogy, or at the very least in a series of films, that was uh, kicked off by the film X back in uh, uh, 2022, uh, followed up by Pearl the same year, which was a prequel to the first film. And then this was the conclusion called Maxine with three X's in the middle. And the, these all star, uh, you know, Hollywood ingenue Mia Goth who I don't know anything else that she's been in other than these films and it, it, something where maybe she, oh, kept her, kept, she kept her clothes on because he was just in something as well, which I saw and um, let me look really quick. I will tell you what she's been in. But, uh, but the in house. Any, oh, there you go. Okay. Infinity pool, infinity pool, that weird movie mayday, Emma staggering girl, high life, Suspiria, Meryl bone, uh, and wow. uh, what's, her, what's her real name? Does she have a real name? Her name is Mia Goth. Mia Gypsy Mello de Sylvia Goth, Charlie. She has. We'll stick with Mia Goth uh, <laughs> because it's go. something you can actually say. Um, but these films are interesting. So the first film kicked off in rural Texas in the 1970s and uh, with an aspiring troupe of uh, uh Adult filmmakers and actors who uh, r- who fall into a trap of uh, renting a uh, space in a cheap rural property with an, an old couple that just likes to uh, kill people, uh, and 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 then you jump you jump backwards, and the only survivor, sorry to spoil it, is Maxine. Uh, who is not with the three X's, just one X at this point, uh, who is Mia Goss' character who drives off a la the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, escapes into the night at the end of that film. Second film is a prequel that tells the story of the elderly woman in the first film, whose name is Pearl, in the late 19-teens. And it's 
it, it's, you know, there, there's no nudity in that one at all. The first one is chock filled with nudity. Uh, and then we get to the third film where we catch up with Maxine 12 years later, 1985, Los Angeles, the same time as the Night Stalker murders, which raged between 1984 and 1985, as told by the film. Um, and there's stalking going on in Maxine's world and trying to figure out if uh, with her fellow friends in the adult film actress uh, you know, uh, you know, go go dancing club world. Uh, Maxine is trying to get out of porn and becoming a regular actress, and she lands a role in a sequel to a film uh, that I don't know if it's a real film, but it was called. I think it was a made up film for it, but Lily, Lily uh, actress Lily James, or maybe it's actually no, it's actress Lily Collins, Phil Collins' daughter, comes back as the star of that first film and has uh, some roles. Halsey, the singer. A very beautiful mm. singer also has a role in the yeah. film, um, but it's about you know Maxine, who is obviously a very uh, tough woman who can take care of herself, uh, having to fend off what we find out is a cult that is cleansing the sin in the city of angels. Um, quite a twist of an ending, quite a disgusting ending, not to be surprising. It's very graphic. There's a bit of nudity here, a bit of nudity there, but it's certainly not like the first film. Um, but April absolutely didn't want to watch the other two films after the, after we watched the first one together. I think she would have enjoyed this one because it was more of a mystery horror film. It's it's not great by an investigation any, film. Yeah, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it was pretty great. And Mia Goth is she's a beauty. She's a non traditional beauty, but uh, she really does she really does pump out the ingenue vibe. So I really do like it. So very strong ties between her character in the first film, who's a runaway. Uh, and then having that runaway plotline come full circle. Kevin Bacon also uh, stars as a uh, a very stylized um, private investigator uh, who is uh, set to, to basically track Maxine down. So, uh, and he does not meet with such a good end. Uh, but anyway, Todd, I would recommend it. It's it's available on Max. Have you seen the other it two films? It looked interesting. Yeah. I have not seen the other two films, but this one stood out. I was kind of like, oh, I kind of like that. Kind of like a yeah. period, yeah. grimy, uh, like serial killer. Yeah, you know, kind of I, would, I would say, since you have the benefit of not having seen any of them, start with the second one because it's a prequel. Watch, watch the first one second and then watch this. And you'll be good. You'll be good. Is that the, is that the, is that the, uh, what is it called? The, the what's it called order? <laughs> yes. That's the machete order of the, yes. of the Maxine universe. Maxine universe. Um, okay. So good anyway, April and I racked out a couple of very silly kind of quasi genre, uh, Netflix movies and damned if I'm not going to end up screwing up what the hell these two were about. Oh, I'm sorry. The second one really wasn't. The first one was, it was about a woman played by, I'm going to draw a blank on the actress's name, but she is a character in Yellowstone. Todd, Yellowstone comes back next week. I already pre-ordered the second half of season five because we pre-ordered it. Yeah. You can pre-order it on, um, Fandango. That's how we got the series four because you, it's, on, it's on Paramount network. It's the only way I can watch it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. that's the only way. So, uh, but anyway, she played a character on that show. That don't Saturday. they eventually go to Peacock? Eventually. They're they're about two seasons oh, okay. behind. Yeah, they don't have them all. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're at least a year behind. Um, but uh, so it's this, uh, it, that actress whose name I'm drawing a blank on, uh, has lost her young child. She's contemplating suicide. She's standing on the edge of a cliff. In a natural, in, in a in a you know nat- yeah, national park somewhere in California, where fin- actor Finn Wittrock walks up. The future Green, he's still Green Lantern, right? He's going to be a Green Lantern. And that upcoming Wittrock? show, yeah. From uh, was he from your? Uh, he was from the American Horror Story. You know who he is. But anyway, he I he barely he, recognize him. He walks up, talks her down off the ledge. Um, but then it really quickly turns out that he's a serial killer. He injects her with a drug that infects, infects, uh, complete paralysis, throws her in a car and drives her off to his lair. Um, and that's when the story really begins. Um, so yeah, uh, kind of a predictable, as you would imagine, uh, kind of storyline filmed entirely in Canada, but Hey, that looks like this. It looks like the Sierra Nevada mountains. They can get away with that. We're filming it in Alberta. Uh, you know, it's a lot cheaper. Um, so yeah, so that was Netflix movie number one. And the second movie, uh, based on a true story, uh, I think written and or directed and starring Anna Kendrick, which is the woman of the hour. Todd, you probably heard about this one. I it's, have heard about this film. Yes. It has to do with a uh, one of the uh, you know dating game kind of shows in the 1970s. 
uh, where one of the male contestants was an honest to God serial killer. Um, and through the course of this, they were able to, uh, they were able to, to, to nab the guy. That is really how it ends. Um, but this it's, it's told about a few different women. Anna Kendrick, uh, is the main character who is, is not the ultimate victim, uh, which you know that she's not cause it's a true story, but, um, the guy they found to play this serial killer guy is oh, he's creepy as shit. They really they nailed that part of it. So this is probably one of the better Isn't Netflix. That like a uh, horrible stereotyping. <laughs> that a, 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 a creepy cre- serial killers. A, Come a, on, a creepy, not all bad. A, a creepy, slightly overweight, unshaven uh, guy with long hair is a ser- serial killer. Ah, it just happened to work out this way. Um, but that that one I actually would recommend uh, because I, I thought it was really mal- well made. And after we finished watching it, April uh, turned and looked this up. The uh, Anna Kendricks took her fee uh, for making and starring in this and donated it to charity because she just didn't feel right about keeping it. Um, because of the nature of the story, which I thought, uh, which I think is amazing. Good for her. Do that's something pretty good. cool. Yeah, yeah. that's that's pretty good. cool that it happens. I mean, you think of everybody you meet and the old catchphrase, they were such a nice man. He seemed totally, isn't that what you used to tell me about your the, your neighbor in your old neighborhood? He's like, my other neighbor, Jeffrey Dahmer, never see him. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could talk about old man Witherspoon who uh, has uh, wood on his windows and only opens his door that far. Yeah. When he gives away Halloween candy. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, bloop, bloop. Oh, my goodness. So anyway. <clears throat> no, excuse me. So, yes, that is the week in, in Netflix movies. But we are done at the Geek Easy Todd. Time to get ourselves out of here. Skipping out on that bill yet again. But I've got my Air Qantas app out. Time to get us to the land down under where Hologram Tina and the mutants await us for our final proclamation of the much ballyhooed Venom the last dance. Let's do it. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! Thank you, Tina. The mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And this week, we are talking about Venom the Last Dance. Um, this is a spoiler filled uh, reaction to this Film. third in the final trilogy of right. the Venom universe. Uh, Tom Hardy will now go on and make uh, a sequel to uh, the Cobra character we just talked about. Um, the premise of this film, Eddie and Venom on the run, face pursuit from both worlds as circumstances tighten. They're compelled to make a heart-wrenching choice that could mark the end of their symbolic, symbolic partnership. Directed by Kelly Marcel. Also written by Kelly Marcel and Tom Hardy. Apparently, oh, they are God. production partners. Oh my God! Um, yeah, this film released uh, two weeks ago. Uh, budget 120 has made 317 million dollars. These movies are highly successful. So people you ask like why them. they keep making them because people keep going, especially overseas. Very, very big overseas. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, Tom Hardy returns. Chuelator Ejiofor. Comes in as a uh, military dude, Juno Tempo Temple, <laughs> playing Doctor Teddy Payne. Uh, right. Resi fans, uh, as you know, as the, the lizard. lizard from the yeah. Amazing Spider-Man, uh, not playing that character, playing a hippie named Martin mm-hmm. Stephen Graham, playing Detective Mulligan, who you're probably like, hey, is that guy somebody? No, no not I, really. Looks I like think, Marky Mark. I think or, uh, both he and uh, uh, Ch- uh, Chiatel Ida for they were in the previous films, right? Sure. I, yeah, the detective was, was for sure. I the detective was for sure. I 100% yeah. have no recollection of that film because it was so bad while we were watching it. The one with, with Woody as, as uh, with Woody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of things happened in that film. And yeah, it, it's, you know, they, you know, it, it was happened. Peggy Lou, she's back. Uh, Miss oh, Chen. Mrs. Chen uh, yes. Clark Bacco as Sadie, who I think was a scientist. Alana Uback is uh, Martin's wife named Nova. Mm-hmm. And then other than that, you got a lot of people. Oh, and the last one, Andy Serkis, who is the director of the second film, is portraying the character that you probably really know who it's him as right. null. Right. So there we go. That is the premise of the film. Um, and I'll talk about some of the uh, lines of this movie at the end and also a little bit of trivia and where this is going next. So, Charlie, uh, this movie opens up exactly where the last one finished at their um, end credit where uh, Eddie was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right, 616. Wormhole. Right. 
this one lasts about two seconds, gets pulled back into his bar well, with was, uh, Danny Danny uh, Rojas. It was, the and, and it was the first part of it was recycled footage from the end of uh, Spider Man No Way Home. That was the yeah. stinger in that film. So that was not. Oh, that was the stinger? Okay. Correct. I yep. totally forgot. Yep, yep, yep. I just knew there was a stinger. Yep. No, that was it. And of course, he when he gets yanked out of there, he leaves a little glob of the symbiote. They're like, oh, that's going to find Peter Parker. It's a start your engines kind of moment. Um, and uh, yeah, ba- then he's uh, dropped back in his own universe where it's the same bartender who in such short hair, he has long hair. So, oh my God, but I think it's wearing the same clothes. Um, and then, sure. yeah. Uh, and so Venom now. So yes, in the other universe, whatever it is, Null, who I swear to God, I thought was going to be Norman Reedus. I feel like I read a headline somewhere that said Norman Reedus would have been great in that role that was really nothing. Because he's got stringy hair that now looks like it's never been cleaned. <laughs> exactly correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> but yeah, this, this is a, you know, National Lampoon's uh, vacation uh, trip for Eddie because he's down in Mexico. That's where he's at. Uh, and he encounters some trouble there and has to, you know, Venom has to, Eat some, eat some, you know, drug lord guys' heads and terrible. Well, he's apart. on the run because apparently framed for the detective that was in the second film was shown as being killed when in actuality not killed. Yes. So Eddie, they, so they decide that they're going to escape and go to New York. So that's the premise right. of this film. That's, what, that's where they're going to go. Wants. Why yeah. New York? I mean, it's not like you're going to be less noticeable there in New York. Right. And not go to Montana, Charlie. I, yeah, and with the Yellowstone people, exactly, exactly. Be, yeah. Be lot, but yes, his, his uh, ger- and then there's a whole subplot where uh, the fame in in Nevada. So because we do, we end up with Vegas as the the actual cityscape setting that we have in Nevada. Uh, the famous Area 51, home of aliens, Air Force Base, whatever it is, is being decommissioned. And uh, but of course, on, just like with you know Shield or GI Joe, or whatever, there's an underground. Uh, facility where it's a big science lab and your head scientist, and this was the the part of it that made zero sense. Your head scientist is uh, played by Juno Temple, who is, of course, from uh, Ted Lasso. That's how I know her. But Mm -hmm. she lives out in the desert and she's, you know, she's had, you know, somebody's having a dream. She's imagining herself as a child walking arm in arm with her brother who gets struck by lightning. Lightning. (laughs) And then because they're holding hands, her arm is scarred and all of the muscles are destroyed. So she just has like a, uh, she doesn't have like a limpy arm or whatever. She just has an arm that no, doesn't work. Her left arm that, doesn't work. Well, I thought she used it even. I thought I saw her use it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm Could like, it didn't seem like a big deal. But it, you know, but I, it's, I don't know. You know, but it's, it's, and again, it comes but later in the film. We'll talk about how her getting struck by lightning comes back later in the film as a, as a, Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cause I was wondering about where that plot line right, was going to come exactly. back. But I mean, when I saw her, I'm like, okay, well this chick has an arm that doesn't work. She's going to get a symbiote and then she'll be fine. Um, not that yeah. I'm saying this. Um, oh, well, yeah. Sorry. That's what happened. I'm sorry to jump yeah, in. But anyway, exactly. Yeah. But at, at yeah. area 51, that, that detective who's also been glommed onto by a symbiote on and off it's keeping him alive explains, I believe it's him that explains that venom when he, and this was, this was such a fuzzy area when venom completely envelops, uh, Eddie's body and not just a little bit. And venom goes through this whole sequence where he explains it to, to Eddie because venom is aware of it. When he fully venoms out, he emits the signal from something called the codex, which is stolen from Superman. Um, where Null can sense well, it. Was the codex yeah. just like a? Isn't the codex like just really just a like a? Um, it's just like a, a a guide to language. I guess codex. Like you'd have like oh this means a and this means b and yeah. Sure, why not? Uh, but at any rate, uh, Null needs to get his hands on this because he's a, Null is able to open interdimensional portals and send over. He just has a, a, a field of monsters that he can send, and they're indestructible. Xenophages. There you go. They're indestructible, so they're gonna they're gonna find Eddie, but they can only find him like if he's venomed out, and then venom retracts. They can he, sense it, it, it dis- like uh, the it predator, disappears, which is dumb because why would Venom ever then fully ever venom? come out? Exactly, he, he and then come it, out the like, other- he, like 99%, like his one, like maybe leave one finger, and then he could. It's just it's, 
it, it's anyway. it's ridiculous. We get a lot of exposition because we get you know we get the exposition about Area Fifty One about Hall. You know, at, like Venom wasn't the only symbiote that was was that was captured. So they they captured all of them except for Venom. Obviously, Carnage got out, but um uh the other part was we get a lot of exposition by Venom who talks about how Null is the offspring or the child or the vent the symbiotes are the children of null along with the xenophages and they captured null um and they escaped but he's yeah. stuck there he's he's imprisoned but he controls them it's just i just like i said but he makes those why can't he get out with one of those portals uh, I, because he's sitting in the chair. Maybe he's chained to the chair. Maybe is he chained to the chair. You know, the codex yeah. is like a skeleton key, in, or maybe it's like a wristband. Uh, okay, he needs to be like like at Disney. He's like one of those people you hear about, like they, they those people like their their ass has grown into the toilet. Oh seat. right, yeah, my, my thousand pound <laughs> life or whatever. Yeah, somebody, with, yeah. someone who's been, been sorry on, been on a couch for twenty years and they're they're a part yeah. of the, it's, the, the, it's they're part, part of the couch. Of yeah. Exactly. So, so we do get you know Eddie going through the desert, and he's got a he he fights this team of like you know the the, the Navy SEALs, and uh, in, in there's a sequence in the river, um, and he escapes there, but then he becomes a fish. He becomes a fish, and then not too long after that, we get the well, we do see him. He's up on an airplane for a while. But because he's, yeah. he's hitching a ride, uh, the, and that's when he gets forced to the ground, and that's when the black helicopters show up, or whatever it is. And then he gets out of the the fish part, and then he finds a horse, and so you get the famous scene that you well, get from the trailer where he's on a he 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 venomifies that horse. But I don't understand how Eddie is taking down like without venom. How is he taking out like paramilitary troops? Uh, he's a goofus. He is not in good shape. Yeah, he's like he stumbling is, around. He is such. But he's taking. Yeah, he is such yeah. a dum dum, which is not really what the character in the comics was. And like. he's supposed to be a investigator, an investigative uh, he's a journalist, reporter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's just very odd. Yeah. So they 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 do stumble through excellence. The xenophage comes in, takes out all of the troops. They escape. Right. They they Eddie's walking around with no shoes. Um, I guess what? people don't bother him, and why? that's where he runs into why can't Venom the hippie give him, family? Why can't Venom give him shoes? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so he meets yeah. this hippie family with Reese Reese Evans, and there's a uh, always rolling their eyes teenage daughter. There's the hippie mom, and then there's of course the uh, precocious preteen child who just thinks Eddie is great, and he rides with them for a while, and they sing, and they said, you know, oh, we're going to Area 51 because Dad's always wanted to see an alien, blah, blah, blah. So we spend 15 minutes in that. I'm just like, all yes. you're doing is setting them up so that this family can later find themselves in danger and Eddie's going to have to sacrifice himself something. It's a that very, never happens. It was very, an original idea, Charlie. Take that was, back. It was a very, very thin setup that has been done. I wouldn't even say it's been done better because it can't be done better because it's terrible. Um, but yes, by this point, now how does do they finally capture Eddie and that? No, they get to Area Fifty One. I'm trying to remember. Not, well, no. so so they end up going to Vegas. So that's the thing. The family drops them off in Vegas. Eddie, there's some hijinks where. Uh, Eddie gets to dress up, so he ends up taking out a guy peeing, puts on a suit, right. and there's a funny scene where Venom wants to gamble all of a sudden. He's got 20 <laughs> bucks. That's it. He wants to gamble, <laughs> and he fun. goes through the, the dollar slots really quick, yeah, then kicks the the um, thing, and guess who they run into, Charlie? At Vegas. Who do they the run into? The only other uh, character with any kind of connective tissue to the other films, Mrs. Chen, who is the, who ran the Bodega Bank in San Francisco, where he's from, and she's like, come hang out with me. I have the super sweet or whatever, and they're hanging out. They're da- they do What do they dance? Dancing Queen? Is it Dancing Queen? I'm dance guessing queen? it was. Is there like, a, I gotta find out the soundtrack here, because yeah. there was a lot of songs in this movie. Right. Where's the soundtrack? But, There's a soundtrack. But in, yeah. in in doing this, it's it, I think it's it, I think that the microphages catch up with catch up with him and also the 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 army catches up with him. Well, because Venom wants to dance. And right. as he fully d- goes to Venom, he turns into the codex, right. comes in. Yeah. They 
the, the, yeah. the xenophage comes in to attack them and that's right. when the troops come in they steal that they separate venom and eddie and then take them back to area, area 51. 51 right and the xenophage yeah. just obviously run off so so yeah so now we've worked our way up to the third act there's going to be a big showdown because you know even though they have eddie incarcerated and they have the detective guy incarcerated detective, yeah. and they have all- been talking to yeah. them. Like the, yeah. his, his symbiote has come out yeah. and talked to them and tells them like the night has teeth and things <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh my God. And all the other symbiotes uh, are in little glass files scattered around this room. Different colors, different yep. varieties. It's like, it's like, um, it's your the color. It's like the power Rangers yeah. color of the rainbow. Your United, doctor. Your United, no, yeah. yeah. Your United Benetton of, of uh, symbiotes. Exactly. So, so anyway, I, Obviously, push comes to shove. The xenophobes. The, the, I'm going to call them the xenophobes. xenophobes. <laughs> the xenophobes. xenophobes. <laughs> oh, boy. They hate each other. Like like all the aliens. It's going to sound like yeah. a Trump rally. Sorry. Uh, they Yeah, they show up, and it turns into Battle Royale. All the little symbiotes get freed up. Um, but yeah, the, the thing about the, the, what are they now? The Xenobites? What the hell are they now? Xeno, the Xenophages. The, yeah. The, I'm just going to call them the Xenobites from Hellraiser. Yeah, that's up. what I was thinking of. It, the, yeah. the Xenos, they show up. What's gross about them is when they bite somebody, they bite them and then oh. out of their back. It's, like, it's just, it's just, they, it just all the chunder comes it's, out. It's like a, it's like a, um, a wood chipper. tree, um, wood chipper. Wood chipper. Yeah. It's like through the back. I'm like. Yeah, that's interesting. I know. And apparently the sim, the, 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 the um, the, uh, symbiotes, can be absorbed or up, destroyed, yeah. so, which uh, we haven't yeah. seen before. Your first, yeah. your first victim is the detective guy. He's out. He gets eaten up. Um, the other symbiotes get freed, and some will just jump onto like the security guard or some random guy. None of them are making it. Um, but the only survivors uh, at this point, uh, Juno Temple with her with her arm that works, grabs one of the vials and puts it in her pocket. So they're obviously they're saving that. But her assistant grabs one. And it's per isn't it Christmas? Purple? What was her name? Like something <laughs> Christmas? Sadie Christmas? Is no, that her name? you're thinking of uh, a Professor. Wasn't that for, wasn't it that a Bond girl was Christmas? It was. Uh, well, it was, yes, yeah, there was. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Professor Christmas. Oh, Christmas came early. Ha ha ha. Um, no. Her name was Sadie Christmas. Oh my uh, gosh. Oh, Clark yeah. Bacco played Sadie Christmas. Yes. There you go. So obviously it's, you know, it, it's your regular run and gun, big blue, it, without the big blue sky. Well, no, there was a little bit of sky hole because little holes would have to appear for the things to jump out. But it's a CGI monster fest for 20 minutes. Naturally, the hippie family shows up. They're at the gate. They want to save Eddie. So they go inside. They're up in one, you know, uh, one of the control towers for the airfield trying to save. And they're like, no, I got to help him. And it's all this back and forth. And eventually, and it's, uh, uh, you know, the regular army shows up, they're shooting their weapons, have no effect, whatever it's, uh, the Strickland, who's the general, he's there. And he's like, it was all my fault and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, it gets down to it being just venom and the general. And they're, they're trying to pull the big Zeno into a trap of some kind. Um, but during this time, they get help. Acid yeah. and extreme acid. Extreme acid. Yes. But before yeah. this happens, naturally, Juno Temple, who's got the last vial, breaks it and it takes over her body and her symbiote power, because as a child, she was struck by lightning, is that she has lightning like another Spider-Man villain. Electro. And super fast, though. She's that yes. was like more so than electric. She's lightning oh, seemed okay. like being fast was like more right. of the, the thing because she escapes with Sadie Christmas because they were all the all the symbiotes were like being good guys. They don't want to eat yeah. brains. They don't want to do anything. They just want to they just want to save Venom. But I'm like, um, well, if they you just kill live, Venom, yeah. then, then they won't come, they won't be able to come back after. Right. It's, it's like yeah, there's there's ah. there, there's no through line, but uh, uh, yeah, apparently uh, Juno Temple, when she was struck by lightning as a child, uh, lightning became part of her DNA. I did not know yes. that that's what happens when you get struck by lightning. Of course it does, Charlie. Where is else is going to go? Are you going to fart it out or something? It could be. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have a really bad one, thunderclaps. Um, yeah. But yes. Uh, so yes, uh, Juno Temple gets the hippies back to safety. I don't think Sadie makes it. I think she gets killed. And now we're down to the final three. It's just a general. Oh, I thought she saved Sadie. I, I I don't I think she, I thought she grabbed Sadie. Sadie no. lost her. I thought Sadie lost her um, her symbiote, but I, I thought Juno saved her. I have already forgotten. So I, if that's what you're saying, I will take your word for it. But anyway, as you were saying, the they find they they pull. It's the general and Venom pull the big giant Zeno into 
the acid trap. The general makes a heroic sacrifice where he, you know, has a grenade and he sets off the button so that the tank explodes. But Venom, the symbiote, in the big tearful goodbye, yeah. uh, says he said he he's going to sacrifice himself to save Eddie. So he he puts this, you know, he puts this this uh, big bomb blast door over the top of Eddie, and then he goes back and and keeps the the Zeno. In the ass in the kill box long enough for the acid to release, and then both of them both of them are killed. And no, yeah, and there was a lot of a lot of just acid just flying everywhere, so everybody kept on getting hit by the acid. Right, it exactly. was great. Well, that's it was why the, great. that's why the general um, that's why the general didn't make it. So anyway, with the codex destroyed, Null is is prisoner for all time, and uh, that's the end of that portion of the movie. But yeah. then I did read it here, Charlie. Oh, okay. Pain bonds with the symbiote to save Sadie from the explosion. So she did save Sadie Christmas. Okay, very good. Well, that was something that I clearly forgot. So anyway, uh, so we kind of fade to black, and then we do see Eddie having reached New York City, playing the corniest My Friend is Dead song, the Paul Walker song from Fast and Furious, as he walks down the street, the It's Been a Long Time song as Eddie's standing at the Statue of Liberty and takes a picture with his phone and he says, this one's for you, buddy. And that's the end of the movie. Well, we forgot that uh, the, the the military told him, um, we're forgiving you for all of your bad things. Right, your record right. is expunged. Don't be a bad dude. And then disappear. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the it. end of the film. That's the yeah. end of the film. Um, we do get a really pointless stinger of, of Null just going, and that's it. That's the end of the movie. Yeah, I will return and I will eat your brains and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I'm like, th- but th- I thought the Codex was the only way he could do it. Well, he's going to find another way. And with a, uh, I don't know if that's domestic box office of 300, but. Uh, well, 300, did yeah. you say for the last end of credits? I, I did. I did. But now I don't remember what it is. I did stay through. Well, it was basically question? the Venom symbiote survived and was oh, right. taken over a cockroach. That's right. The guy, uh, because. There you go. Because the bartender guy from Mexico, who also got captured, wanders out into the wasteland and he's walking away. But yeah, you're right. It's a there's one yeah. last shattered vial in this cockroach. So there you go. Well, maybe that's why, because the codex still is around because a part of Venom survived and Eddie's still alive. I don't know maybe. that. I don't know that it was established. I also don't know why Venom had it, but the others did. Like what made Venom special? I did. The, well, the, apparently it was very special because all the symbiotes were perfectly fine with letting him, like letting themselves die and letting right. Venom exactly. live. So. Well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. He he was uh, he was the symbiote Jesus, I guess. You know, he was the yeah. So, so here's some great lines from this film, Charlie. Please, please. Um, this is what Null says at the end. Your champion has fallen. Your planets will be mine. The king in black is awake. I will kill your world. Everyone will burn, and you will watch. Then Venom says, "Hola, bitches." <laughs> Uh, then and uh, bitches like Dave. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, and Venom says we're home. I'm so done with the multiverse shit. <laughs> the multiverse. Oh, but goodness. then I have to ask. We so here we go, Charlie. What's next? Another question: Is Venom really dead? We don't know. Of course. Um, next thing is what happened to the Venom <laughs> le- bit left behind in the MCU? Right. Um, apparently, it con- contradicts it. The the sim- the little piece comes back with them. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, what happened to the Venom piece captured at the start of the movie? Um, well, I will. Yeah, blah, blah, I will blah. say that I read a headline today. Uh, and, and I put it in our Discord. By the way, if you don't subscribe to our SFU Discord, you are missing out. That is where all we share all of our great rumors and news and conversations happen, yada, yada, yada. Um, that <clears throat> an Agent Venom film, which is in the comics, uh, is structured around the Spider-Man character of Flash Thompson, who in the Tom Holland films is played by actor Tony Rivoli. Uh, Flash Thompson is... Goes off to war in the army, loses his legs over in Iraq or Afghanistan. They keep retconning it. Originally, it was Vietnam. Uh, that's how long ago it was, but they keep retconning it. And he bonds with a Venom symbiote or the Venom symbiote, mm-hmm. which gives him his legs back, but then he's basically a Venom soldier. And so they, I think the thoughts of making a film like that would be cool if it could be one they would actually do in a Spider Man movie because it's an established Tom Holland character. But we'll see. That would be in 616 if they did it that way. Um, but yeah, there's gotta be something because these, like you said, oh, I know what's going to come next, Charlie, right. Dr. Payne and electric venom. 
Electric Venom. Oh, uh, uh, Dr. Mayhem and, oh, like the Muppets? Dr. Venom? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. So at, at this point, yeah, um, Tom Hardy said his, his time with Venom is done. So okay. good for him. Move on. Uh, so d- regardless of that, the movies have been pretty successful, not critically. But yeah, we're done with this. Then we've got um, Craven, And then after that, nothing else yeah. except for from a movie perspective. We do right. have Spider-verse. Spider-Verse and then we do have um, Spider-Man Noir. Right. That is all the projects that are Sony right. or Sony related right. versus the Marvel stuff. So that. the question is, what is and, and, and you're the wheeler and dealer with this kind of stuff. What is Sony's um, legal hold on the Spider-Man character? When does it end? When does it get renegotiated? It's, per, it's perpetuity. It's in perpetuity, meaning forever, as long as they make a movie every so often. So at this point, I don't think the spider-man marvel movie counts because it is actually produced by marvel so that why that's why it makes sense that marvel or sony keeps doing this because they want to keep the money maker so mm-hmm. we're gonna get more films right. unless marvel you know unless marvel absorbs sony um which i don't know if will happen i mean that's probably the only way it could happen <laughs> Right. If they take over like uh, Sony Pictures. But of course, they make a lot of money from the video games too. Right. Who knows? So, but yeah, like you said, there's nothing on the horizon that is going to be the. I mean, they took quite a kick in the balls over Madam Web. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Craven will probably no, be no great shakes. But I would say the, the first three films, I remember a little bit about the first movie that was with Michelle Williams. I think. And the villain was one of the rogue one guys, if I'm not mistaken. And then the, sure. s- the second film with Woody was just, it was abysmal. I couldn't even hold my attention in the theater. That's how bad it was. And this, this had, this was dumb, but it had some fun moments. Um, you know, it's but, goofy, but I mean, it, it's, you just have to be along for the ride of it. Just being right. a weird movie. It just, I mean, yeah, it just didn't really stack in any way, shape or form. So, all right. So one out of 10, uh, severed, Head, yeah, heads bitten off by venom what do you give this one? Oh, you know what i will give this one a solid five out of ten i mean if we're, if it's in the venom scale not a bad venom film but it's still a bad film oh, <laughs> but absolutely. i'll give it a five out of ten for just yeah. being what it is and yeah. it is what it is yeah. i yeah yeah, very, very bad. I thought the special effects were decent. I mean, you can tell how decent the special effects are sometimes by the length of the credits, and these credits were very, very long. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. I felt I, like I was going to pee my pants waiting for the end. Uh, I got, <laughs> thing I got, happening. I got up and went to the bathroom during the credits and came back and still had plenty of time. I there. should have probably done that instead. Yeah, yeah. I did just because we were sitting in the theater was just two doors down, yeah. so it was nice and easy. Or the bathroom was two doors down. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll give it a six. You know, it was uh, I'll give it a six just because it was I I feel in some way shape or form an improvement over the previous one, but still dumb. But you know what? Sony's getting their money out of it. You know, good for them for at least, and if they're not investing in the story, at least they're investing in the look of it, which is of course the same argument that you and I have had about the avatar films. It's a great look. There's no story. (laughs) I like the second one. Yeah. The first one, it's a repeat of the same old. Yeah. 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 It's Pocahontas with blue people. Got it. All right. Well, that's the show friends as always. Thank you for joining us. We have a rocking good time no matter what we do. Todd, where do people find you out there? They find me on Twitter, or actually threads, at Tioxtra, at Secret Friends Unite. And then you can follow me on the Discord, always posting stuff there. Yes, same here. Uh, threads and Instagram. I am at the C three T H E C E E T H R E E. Uh, very, very big on our discord. My wife and I also run a discord for star Trek people called the United Trekkers of Michigan, where we'd love to talk about things related to star Trek. But I always forget to mention, and I try to do this over on code 47. We do have a mailbag over at secret friends, unite at gmail.com. Drop us a line. Tell us what you're thinking about this show, any of our shows. If you love the Venom movies and we're way off base, write us a note. We will uh, likely read it on the show because uh, we would like to hear definitely more from the people uh, that are... This is email out. anymore, Charlie. I think I've, I've not gotten a real email from someone in 10 years like oh like an actual someone writes you a personal note. like an actual correspondence <laughs> uh, yes. of any type 
Well, you know what? We're not looking for a correspondence. We want a one-sided note where somebody tells us what they think. Just DM us or uh, yeah. tag us on Instagram or if, if that's easy, whatever it takes. But reg- like Captain America said, whatever it takes. But with that, I will bid you a fine fair do. I will tell you as always that sharing is caring and keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In the truck. We are Venom. Venom. <laughs> This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member, get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.